I'm still in the South, more or less physically recovered from whatever I had, but mentally aimless. I kill for someone to talk to, for something new to read. At dinner tonight, I met a couple of Malagasy guys on their way to a village on the coast to work on a water project. They said I'd love the village and that it would only cost such and such to pay us a rent to take us there. I said fine, but at some point realized that that was not just my share. I was paying for the surrette. Our driver did something that I hadn't seen before. He stripped the thorns from one end of a cactus branch for a handle and used the other end, mostly but not completely free of spines, to prod the animal. <laughs> Zebus basically have one speed. Prod them and they lurch forward and trot for as much as a minute before returning to their default gait. I wondered if he were using the rod more because he had a vizaha on the cart. Whatever the reason, when he really wanted to get the animal's attention, he used it where it would be best felt. I'm not an animal rights activist, and neither am I against sodomy. But as a rule, I don't like to see any creature forcibly sodomized. I decided to exercise my purchasing power and asked the water project guys to remind the driver that we were in no hurry. No need, therefore, to sodomize the zebu. We seemed to reach consensus and plodded on. But too slowly for the driver's liking, apparently, because a short time later, he sodomized the zebu again. Tell him to stop, I said. I'm paying for the surette and would like to have a sodomy-free ride. He agreed, but we'd only gone a little further when he did it again. Tell him I'm going to get out of the surrette and walk if he does it again. It was getting dark now, by the way. There will be no pay. Does he understand? Yes, yes. But he did it again. Stop! The cart stopped. I grabbed my pack and leapt out. What, man? I told you I wouldn't ride any farther if he sodomized the zebu, and he did it anyway. I'm not going with you, and I'm not paying him. No, man, you have to pay him. Why? Because it will go badly for us if he doesn't get paid. He may complain to the chief of the village. It could endanger our water project. You want me to pay the sodomite driver for a surrette ride he did not complete? I'm in the middle of a desert. Yes. The money was bald in my hand, but the prospect of paying infuriated me. But far be it for me to endanger a water project. So finally, after a long moment, I flung the money at him. It bounced off the driver and landed in the sand. Without emotion, he bent and picked it up, then climbed back onto the surrette. He was the one who'd sodomized the zebu, and yet I felt like the asshole and I hadn't saved this evening. Presumably he would still be sodomized all the way to Lavinor, and at my expense. They rode off. It was the dead of night, and all I'd really achieved was to strand myself in the middle of nowhere. Salama. Salama. I'm riding this in a hammock in front of the beach hut I used to imagine when I thought, I should go to Madagascar and find some kind of beach hut. But I still don't have anything new to read. No one to talk to. 
I'm sick of my own company, and the only thing I've been drawing lately is a blank. Following mass media provides both daily stimulation as well as daily synchronization of one's thinking with the conventional wisdom, whereas isolation allows divergent thoughts to evolve. Levers of the mind, which can be considered either wonderful variations or among the stupidest of the primates. I've learned that both literally and figuratively, there are no lemurs in this part of Madagascar. Unspoiled beach, unspoiled by tourists, unspoiled by locals, unspoiled by necessary supplies. Unspoiled by help if I scream. Sure is a pretty place though. The sort of place that makes you wish you'd bought your girlfriend, not abandoned her. I was dreading the prospect of contracting with another Surrette driver for fear that the new Surrette driver would have spoken to the old Surrette driver and I'd find myself trapped in Lavanon on a Surrette blacklist. But the new driver was fine. Also, he was an animal lover. I got a terrific corner room at the Mahavoki Hotel. It's large and it's quiet. At least until about 4 p.m., when the deafening house band begins playing in the dining room, directly beneath me, every day. having encountered any English speakers for several weeks, 
was astonished to find myself sitting near two, Garrett, a Peace Corps worker, and Amanda, a British geography teacher. I was keen to ask Amanda if she wanted to join me, so I asked them both if they'd like to join me. They did. What an absolute joy to speak English, to unload all of my insipid observations to someone other than my journal finally. Garrett has a twin brother also serving in the Peace Corps in Kenya. Amanda's on her seventh trip to Madagascar. She's come down from Antananarivo to visit the national parks. I was a little embarrassed to tell them that I was there for no reason whatsoever. Fortunately, vagabondage has a bit more currency among travelers than it does at home, where you'd never genuinely consider dating a drifter. Because I wanted to ask Amanda to meet again for lunch the next day, I asked them both if they'd like to meet for lunch. Amanda said she was already going to a local reserve to see lemurs. Garrett said yes. Hotels have gone up, you know, at the Sahil last night, it's 18,000 a night. Yeah. And it used to be just 16,000, which is pretty expensive, but like the Mahabuki was 10,000, it's 12,000 now. And everything's just kind of hiking up. And I've only been down here for, you know, five and six months in Fort Defense. Yeah, that's changed a lot. Yeah, and food's going up. And, uh, but so. it's not the country, it's just this area. Yeah, it's just this area. It's the mine. Because of the mine? Yeah, the mines. We know the largest port, right? It's going right over there. Yeah. It's there it is. What do they mine here? They're mining ilmite. And what is the ilmite exactly? A mineral that is used in titanium dioxide to make things white. In, in what, for example? In toothpaste. In paint. Paint. In yeah. cleaning products. In makeup. What would happen if we didn't have any ilmite? Can you imagine what the world would be like? Um, it would be a little off white. Wouldn't that be terrible? I always feel a little self-conscious talking to people who are actually doing something here and are not just wandering aimlessly. I try to distract them by asking odd questions. Are you going to come up and see my house? you going to borrow a book? I do want to swap some books if that's a possibility. Possibly. It depends on your books. i got a Henry James, um, uh, Graham Greene. Chinua Akebe. Oh yeah, you'll be able to swap. <laughs> All right. See that? It's the same. use an automated track. In the Malagasy form of karaoke, it appears to be okay to hop on the open mic of a live band.
Calignaro is subject to frequent power outages, which explains why I was issued a candle when I checked into the hotel. I was reading in the sweet, unaccustomed quiet, when dimly beneath me I heard the sound of the band playing an acoustic set. After the French tourists go to bed, they sometimes play Malagasy songs. When played softly, it was quite charming and sufficient to lure me back downstairs. There was one song in particular that really struck me. It had the hook of an American pop song, but was nevertheless unmistakably Malagasy. I was so taken with it, in fact, that I failed to record it. And when it was over, I felt as if yet another enchanting moment had entered the realm of You Had to Be There. Interesting. I've never seen that before. <laughs> now you're qualified to uh, play guitar. I can't get the tune from last night out of my head. And sick at the thought of going home without it, I asked Joss, the band leader, if he would teach it to me. So <laughs> Trying to sing Malagasy lyrics gave me some insight into why I sometimes hear the band sing Ebury and Ivory. <laughs> it isn't easy to sing words that don't mean anything to you. Teaching it to me didn't work. If I try to play it to someone back home, they'll never believe it's a beautiful song. But what is the, and what is the verse? So Josh said he'd take me someplace where I could buy a recording. couldn't find a recording. <laughs> Josh said we might be able to get one tomorrow, somehow. What do you call it? Endemic right, yeah. of the type of flora there right. and fauna. You can't find that in this world, those species. They're right. going to turn that all over. Uh -huh. That's the last pocket of that <laughs> stuff, right? What is it? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a whole forest of 500 hectares. But what is it? A tree, of plant, of... what no, is? No, it's all kinds of trees. It's thousands of mm -hmm. trees. It's, it's biodiversity like we don't have in the States. <laughs> you know, I, I used to go canoeing up in northern Minnesota. Mm -hmm. I can count seven or eight types of trees in that whole wilderness for thousands of lakes. Yeah. That's all there is up there. Yeah. You come here, and you can take five steps, and you have more species than that. <laughs> Serious. And that's where they want to put their mine. Uh, of course. But, is, and is there sand under it? <laughs> they're mining what? It's, it's called ilamite. Yeah, ilamite, yeah, ilamite. And ilamite is what, exactly? Just to make white things. <laughs> it's to make things white. Yeah. White paint. It's got, if it's real white, it's ilamite in it. Uh -huh. Probably not this, but you have cars that gleam in there. What would the world be without Illumite? Uh, a little shade of grayer. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? But I mean, you're, 
You're losing so much green for the sake of white. After talking to Steve, I walked out to the mine to see how close I could get. Interestingly, there was a point when I could watch the mining companies destroying the mountains using modern methods. While in the foreground, a Malagasy farmer destroyed the land by traditional means. This must be what they mean when they say public-private partnership. I'd gone about as far as I could go when a car containing one of the project managers passed. Just by chance, I'd met him at a bar in Richards Bay about two months prior. So not only did he not have me beaten and arrested, but he said he could get me into a demolition the next week. They were going to blow a hole in a mountain, and it should be pretty awesome. And then he got me a lift back into town, in a truck full of ilmenite. Is this ilmenite? I had myself dropped off at the Sahil. Amanda was out, but I left her a note inviting her to the Mahavoki for dinner. I know I should probably focus on the mine, so if I'm lucky she won't show up is how I'll rationalize her not showing up. still trying to get that song, so Joss took me to a recording studio today. Egg crates for sound. And there's the microphones. The. He recorded one song here. Ohira. He said he'd recorded there. And so I assumed that he'd recorded the song and I could get a copy. He recorded Dix, Dix Hira. But talking to him and Sandy, the engineer, it was less and less clear whether we were talking about past recordings or future recordings. Six songs. He did record six. Six. Six Hira. Six. Six Hira, but no CD. No. CD. That's the totality. Hundred and twenty thousand. Ariari and Ariari. One, one, one hundred and eighty thousand. One hundred and eight thousand. Ariari. Lahi be. What? Lahi be. And you, you have, you have, man, manana. One hundred and eight thousand Ariari. Manana. Hmm? Manana, manana is oh, no. easy. You don't. Who has? <laughs> me? No, not me, right? I'm not paying for this recording session, am I? It's impossible. It's not possible, but we can record in two or one song. But uh, it's not. Uh, do hear that? It's 36,000. Okay, so it looks like I'm gonna be the producer of this thing. Producer. Producer. All right, two songs. Do hear that? about me? Doing a single, not a maxi single. Namana one. Namana. You're yeah. gonna do Namana. Ah, good choice. Okay. Thirty-six thousand Ariari is actually a pretty good rate for studio time. That's less than twenty dollars. But one, I'm worried about having enough money to finish the trip. And two, 
I'm experiencing travelers' monetary relativism, wherein, if your hotel costs $6 per night, the prospect of paying $18 for anything seems outrageous. Butter. Ah. Basis. Yes. So this. Flavis. Okay. Where are we going? I have to meet a nomina at the. Uh. I am going to QMM. QMM. Yeah, he's a he travaille QMM. I was supposed to go see Dylan at the mine today, but ended up not quite making it out there. So he's doing a doctorate in something to do with biology, specializing in endemic plants at Tulia University. And at the same time, he got a little phone call from QMM saying, oh, guess what? We need a biological expert to advise us about biodiversity. Would you like a job? So. He said, yes, please, but he has to keep it quite quiet because obviously the people who have been sponsoring him won't be terribly happy because everybody over at WWF doesn't like... Yeah, no kidding. But we did talk about the mine a little bit, so I don't feel as if I'm being totally negligent. Well, what he told me was that all the NGOs here hate QMM. Yeah, oh yeah. Which isn't terribly Indiscriminately. Surprising. I mean, yeah. but my friend, who's the manager, is saying that, oh yeah, we've done all these impact studies and you know, we've been very careful. We're going to replant the hillside, although I you replant an endemic species. I, yeah. I mean, I mean, it won't be primary anymore, will it? It'll be secondary vegetation. Yeah. But if you talk to the Malagasy here and ask them what they think of QMM, they'll say, it's fantastic because we get jobs. <laughs> What's really negligent about prioritizing Amanda over the mine is that the mine, for all of its guards, all right, so what's just your... that, is easier to videotape. How much will I be able to simply allude to Amanda while playing shots of local scenery? I think it's on CS Studio. At uh, one o'clock. At one o'clock. You know, in America, when you go to the studio, the same thing happens. It's usually just standing around some guy's garage and can't get in. I think maybe I suggested it. I think really. I just idly was asking. Yeah, is there a studio in town? I must have oh, okay. sort of implied that I will pay for you to record an album. <laughs> Look at all those bizarre. You know, Fasan stared at each other worse than Malagasy <laughs> stared at Fasan. I know that. I completely disagree because really? when I'm walking down the street and there's like another dude, there are a couple of bizarre walking the other way, I get the impression that they do not want me to ruin this little illusion they have of being way out in the middle of nowhere in Madagascar. And so they'll pretend like the white guy See, isn't even there. You know, other people will say, you know, hello to you around here, or salam or bunch, or they're trying to, everyone, know, yeah. try to cater to whatever they think your language is. Mm -hmm. But if you uh, meet a Faza head on, you might experience the nod. But they also <laughs> might just look straight for you, like they really Yeah, is. totally. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's because they don't, you know, they've got this weird little fantasy built up that they really, you, you're ruining it. There's also the exchange of glance that happens once in a while, you know, when you're going by in separate cars and you look at each other kind of like, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? You know? Yeah, I've seen that. So. Or how about, uh, how about the look that you get from the guy who's with the Malagash woman? Yeah. And you know like, what he's doing. Yeah, and he and knows you know what he's doing. <laughs> Did you meet Sebastian? No. A sexual tourist who was here in the hotel? No, it's self-proclaimed. No, he denied oh, okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you a personal question? Yes. Is this the sexual tourism that I've heard about? Me? Me? Yes. No. No? No. Because uh, I've seen posters, sexual tourism. Uh huh. But it's, not, it's not my case. <laughs> no, no. It's not my case, no. We were talking about sexual tourism. We were just talking about the issue. Many, 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 many people are here. Uh, 
come here for yeah. that. Yeah. Many people, many people. But not I, you. It's, no. <laughs> I'm too, I'm too young for, for that, you know. You're too young? I, I'm, uh, what is the difference? Because in France, uh, I got no problem with that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> many, many people here uh, come here for sexual tourism. Yes. It's old people. Are you many. saying that young people cannot engage in sexual tourism? And then all of a sudden this beautiful woman walks in. She puts her arm around him and she's there to see him. And I'm like, well, what is it? Is this sexual tourism? He said, no, 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 come on. It's crazy. No, she's an old friend. Yeah. Then he bought her dinner and she stayed over. <laughs> well, and that's the thing, Maybe though, she's an old friend. that I've noticed, you know, even like the old, you know, Zah guys with their young, I guess, women, they always go to, they go to dinner first. That's like part of protocol. Yeah. And Whether I, it's a payment of money or you buy them something. I realized that what I like about girls is that it's a validation of me. <laughs> well, I just like to believe that it's some sort of mutual. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. See, in the in the West, the sex is the reward. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's yeah. no payment because the sex is the payment. Yeah. Hanging out with Peace Corps workers, I sometimes think maybe I should join the Peace Corps. That it would be nice to think I'm serving some practical function instead of always just being allowed to tag along because I'm paying for the serret. I find myself craving the legitimacy of being able to tell people that I have an official reason to be here. I might do something about it if I weren't skeptical of all the official reasons to be here. I finally started recording today, but I was troubled almost immediately when it became clear that Joss intended to use keyboard drums. What about that? Mm. Hey, naturale. Mm -hmm. No? Naturale. You're gonna... I didn't want to overstep my producing role. Why should I have a creative veto just because I'm the one with $20? Yeah. So instead I indicated that he should do the opposite of what he was doing. But, uh, you know, you... You know. While at the same time reassuring him that he knew best. You know. It must have been confusing. sound coming from somewhere that didn't seem to bother anyone else. So, as I was uncomfortable giving creative input, I concentrated on trying to stop all the extraneous noise. But I guess Sandy's wife was doing laundry or something, because she kept opening the outer door. So, I tried to close the inner door. I'm not an engineer, but I intuited that a sound studio ought to keep its door closed. <laughs> At the very least, I was successful taking the battery out of the clock on the wall. Club. <laughs>
Ce problemă? We have energy. 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 Yeah. Current. No power. But the computer is on. No, it's a. No, no, don't tell me. But the power is off. A kelur. A kelur. Pini. Jema. Jema. No. Andy couldn't record today, so Amanda and I spent the day walking up the coast to an idyllic village called Ivatra. We sat on the beach of a clear lagoon and drank from fresh coconuts. We swam, and then I ate a lobster that a fisherman cooked in a pit in the sand. The pendulum of the trip has swung briefly and suddenly toward the luxurious. It was growing dark by the time we walked back to Talanyaro, and we had a late dinner in a tiny shack by candlelight because the power was out again. I walked her back to her hotel, and she said, shall we see one another tomorrow? Yes, let's do that. I didn't have my camera all day. I don't really know what I'm going to show. Everyone was happy with the playback of track two. As phenomena, which was the whole reason we're recording, I'm really disappointed. The track just doesn't sound as good as it does when I've heard them do it acoustically. And it definitely doesn't sound the way it did that night at the Mahaboki. More than anything, we've captured the sound of the band bleeding through the floor of my room. That isn't what I wanted. tried to remain conscious of my economic advantage, to not exploit my power to make things go the way I want them. And generally, I think I've done a good job, right up until the moment things stop going the way I want them. When you're paying for the Surrett, it's hard to resist dictating how the Zebu is treated. So, I've made a few decisions, and to begin with, we're going to record an additional acoustic version of the song. We will use the drum. Simisil, 
version is sounding really good, and it's hard not to see this as a vindication of the smart application of money and power. And I can't believe I'm saying that, but just listen to the results. At the end, it's just very staticky here. No, no static. No. La hibe problema. So it must be done again. Repete. Because I want you to uh, here. This is this is the uh, this is my idea. Okay. You make fifty CDs. You burn fifty. Then you sell to Vazaha. Okay. For five thousand. Ari Ari. Wait. That's 250,000 Ari Ari. And look, here I made you this CD. Okay? See this cover. <laughs> <laughs> I will make a photocopy, photocopy, and you make 50 CD, and you sell these to Vazaha. Mm -hmm. So it's important that there's no static. Ecoute, très bon. But uh, it's possible to play uh, on guitar electric. Electric? Yes. I thought it's acoustic. The, the two guitar two. It's the acoustic, acoustic version. I tried to convey the idea of an initial small investment whose return could be reinvested to make larger and larger numbers of CDs. But it was hard to tell whether I wasn't explaining myself properly See, he gets them in bulk. or they thought what I was explaining was stupid. Like a thousand. For yes, every night they play at Mahavoki in their Vazaha, watching you every night. Oui? And so we make a placard that says, Sede por... Oui. And so they... And they say, Oh, how much for a sede? Ah, cinq mille chemises. Worried that I wasn't sufficiently conveying my argument by speaking English with a Malagasy accent, we have a placard. I enlisted Sebastian to translate. Make five. Sell those five, then make ten. Sell those ten, then make ten. The hang-up appeared to be that Sandy was unwilling to make the initial 10 CDs. Record companies always cry poor to the artist. I should have just paid for the first batch myself, but was stubborn. I felt that since I'd already funded the recording, some contribution should be made by my coalition partners. No. 5,000. See this? This is yours. It's mine. I've become weirdly fixated on getting Joss to adopt American-style entrepreneurialism. When you see someone with a fishing line around his head, I think it's only natural to want to help him get a reel, and the solutions we prescribe are, naturally, the ones with which we're familiar. But the secondary effect of that is always to make everything more like us, invariably wider, at the expense of so much green. And, as I should well know, not everyone who appears hapless needs help. They may just be moving by their own circuitous route. But Joss isn't the only one I'm forcing to be something he's not. I wasn't really as curious about the mine as much as felt I ought to be. It seemed like the legitimate story to pursue. 
but I have my own subjects to mine. And if I want to make something honest, I'm going to have to be comfortable with a certain amount of illegitimacy. I think it would be easier to have a legitimate job here. I'd know what I was doing every day for one thing, and I guess that's one reason people keep jobs, to avoid uncertainty. But if there's less possibility to get lost or make a mess of things, there's also less flexibility to explore. And when I encounter it, to seize on something, it feels right. Mahavoki to finish recording, because that was the only place with a tunable guitar. And although we took enormous pains to re-record guitar track D, the final CD still had static on it, something I didn't realize until I got back to the States. But wasn't the whole project folly from the beginning? We could re-record the song a dozen times, making it technically perfect, and still never quite capture what was so enchanting about it that night at the Mahavoki. I could have recorded every minute with Amanda, and still fail to convey the pleasure of those couple weeks together. There are limits to what we can bring home. Storytelling doesn't quite replace personal experience. There's an unbridgeable gap between people and what we can communicate to one another. And however much that isolates us, it also leaves us something uniquely our own. Whenever we're speaking to anyone or a camera is ever involved, we're supposed to make sure it's like they're like, all right, just don't say anything that's crazy. Don't say it. <laughs> so like, watch what you say and make sure that they know that your views are not as do not uh, represent the Peace Corps. Exactly. But you know, you strike me as like what people in the U.S. would hope their Peace Corps workers are like. <laughs> yeah. Which is just kind of nice, earnest guy, cares about the people. You know, is concerned about his village. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> true. Does that, does, that remind, does that strike you as a good depiction of yourself? That's it, a pretty good depiction of myself. But <laughs> well, but the thing is, though, is that I'm still like in the stage where you feel like you're not doing enough, though. Because <laughs> exactly, you know, honestly, because things work so slow here. You know, it's so slow, and you feel you feel almost guilty sitting down reading your book in the afternoon, or you feel like you should be out like mingling or trying to start some projects, well, you know, and it's just not that way That's what I'm talking here. about.